Hi, my name is Chris Siefkin, and today we're going to be going over how to create a flash countdown timer um, using ActionScript 3. This timer has a lot going on here. The timer itself will count down to a specific day and time that you specify. Um, it'll also adjust for daylight savings and for time zone. It won't work everywhere around the world because there are variations, but for the most part this will work anywhere um, at least in the United States and most other places. Also, this is also a button here, so if you click on this, it will take you to a web page that you specify. Now, this specific one was created for a church and their streaming service, so this will count down to Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. When it gets to that countdown, this button will also take them to that streaming service. Um, when it gets to zero, it will progress to this frame, and it will hang out here for a period of time. Now you can set it to anything you want. I've originally set this to an hour. That's roughly the length length of the uh, streaming service. And then both of these frames, the first one and second one, are built in to be buttons to take you to the same place. Now before we get started, there is a disclaimer that I need to make. This tutorial will show you how to do um, exactly what I said, but I'm making an assumption that you already know a little bit about um, Flash and that you already know a little bit about ActionScript. I'm not going to teach every single nuance, I'm not going to explain every single thing. Um, if you know what you're doing, then this will be an explanation and, and a help. If you don't know, then just copy it down verbatim and hopefully you'll learn something along the way. Um, I'm also going to move pretty quickly because this is kind of lengthy and it's tedious. Um, but fortunately this is a video so you'll be able to hit pause, you'll be able to rewind, whatever. So like I said, there's a lot going on here. Um, so I'll, without further ado, let's uh, let's get started. Okay, well the first thing we need to do is open up a new document. It's going to be an ActionScript 3 document, so I'll just leave it that and say okay. And for my purposes, I'm going to adjust the size of my, um, uh, my stage here. So I'm going to edit this. The button that I created was specifically made to fit a piece of their website. Um, so for me, it's going to be 190 by 150. It can be anything you want. Okay, bring this to the center here. Um, next, we're going to create a new layer. Well, actually, let's rename this one first. This layer here, just by double clicking on it, you can rename it to Actions. That's where all of your coding will go. Um, let's create a new layer by clicking down here on this icon. Um, and I'm just going to drag this underneath because, I don't know, I just like it there. Layer 2 is where everything else is going to be. That's where your text layer is going to be. That's where your movie clips, your pictures, whatever. It's all going to be on that. And Actions is only going to be your code. So, make sure our layer 2 is selected, and we will import, go to File, Import, Import to Stage, and I'm going to use this one right here, Import. Now, it thinks that I've got a sequence here, but I'm going to ignore that. Um, so, if it doesn't line up perfectly, you can adjust it yourself. I think that's about right. Click off here. Yeah. Okay. And with this highlighted, before we get started here, um, let's right click on here, go to Convert to Symbol, I'm going to call this Background 1. Leave everything else the same, say OK. Now I'm going to change the instance name to Logo underscore BTN. Now this is pretty important. Um, we're going to be calling to this specific name in the coding. So if you want to change this name, make sure you change this in the code as well. You just click off of it to accept it. And uh, next we're going to be building the text box that will contain um, the actual timer itself. So let's go to text tool over here. At the top here, I'm going to change static to dynamic. And then on the stage itself, you're just going to create a text box by clicking, holding down, dragging. Um, and then what we'll do is type in some placeholders. Now we're going to have um, days, so zero, zero, then hours, then minutes, 
10 seconds. It's kind of hard to see right now. Um, I like Helvetica. I like Bold, that's cool, but we need to up this. Let's make this about 33. That looks pretty good. Now, once you have that, you can change the size of this text box here. Make that fit a little better, and then nudge it using the arrow keys. Mm, that looks about right. So the reason why we put these um, numbers in here is to give us placeholders, so we know how it's going to look, how big things need to be. And also, if we go back to our text tool here, and then at the top we're going to change this back to static. Um, we're going to put underneath these, you know, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So here we go. Days. Now I can just select that. Now, of course, that's awfully big. So let's scale this down. Actually, 8 looks pretty good. It looks pretty small to you here, but I think I'm going to like it that big. And just position that. Click off of it to see. Yeah, I like that. So there's two ways you can do this. You can continue doing exactly what we just did, or you can just click on it here and hit Control C and Control V. Copy and paste. Line that up. Use your text tool to change it. So let me see here. That's going to be hours. Needs to be about there. And yeah, looks pretty good. Copy paste. Move that over here. Using the text tool again to change that to minutes. Once again, just kind of make sure that it's centered. Looks pretty good. And last, copy paste. I'm going to move that over here. And that will be seconds. That looks pretty good. Okay. So this is pretty much all you have to do here. The other thing, one last step, is to take your dynamic text, click on it, and we're going to go to um, Character Embedding. So I'm going to use, because we're using um, numbers, we're using um, symbols here, just to alleviate any problems. I'm going to go uppercase by holding down um, control or the command key, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, punctuation. And we'll say, OK. And then, last but not least, we'll click in here. And we can highlight all of this and delete it. And then click out or just hit the uh, selection key. Okay, and after uh, embedding the characters that you want here, um, now the reason we do this is so that no matter what computer you're on, it will always use what you want it to look like. It won't be searching for um, just a generic sans serif. It will always be looking for the exact font that you use. That's why we do this. The last step into this is to rename this instance. You probably should have done that from the beginning, but that's okay. It doesn't matter as long as it happens in the end. We're going to name this time underscore txt. Now, once again, this is very important. We're calling out to this dynamic text box in our code. So if you change this to something else, you're going to have to change that in the code as well. To accept it, just click off. All right, so that's frame number one. Next, we're going to go down to layer two. Insert timeline blank keyframe. It ends up with another one like this, and just like before, we're going to go File, Import, Import the Stage, and this is where I'm going to get my second background. This is this one right here, Import, and nudge that up, click off just to make sure, and then probably click back and forth to make sure that it's not shifting and it doesn't look like it is. So just like before, we're going to highlight this. We're going to right click on it, go down to convert to symbol, 
I'm going to change this to background 2. Hit OK. And once again, the instance name, I'm going to say exactly the same thing we did before. Logo underscore BTN. Once again, we're calling to this um, instance name in the code. So if you change this, there's things in the code you will have to change as well. Click off to accept it. And then the last but not least, go to Actions with uh, Frame 2. We're going to insert timeline uh, blank keyframe. There you go. And that's it. That's all you need to do. This is um, everything you need to do for the front end or the presentation that you will see. Um, the rest of it will be the back end. Um, and all that coding we will be doing in a second video or part two. So uh, yeah, I will see you in part two of this tutorial.